is really exciting. Union Station, you know, the last time I was in a train station, I was taking a train. Life's crazy like that. You really are excited, aren't you? I'm really proud of you getting your essay picked out by J.B. Harlan himself. What'd you write about? Why I think J.B. Harlan is the greatest mystery writer of all time. Gutty choice? A five-page essay and a, my picture. A picture? Yeah. I sent him a picture of me at the office. I thought maybe if he saw that I worked at a detective agency... Obviously, you thought right. I can't believe it. It's like Cinderella. I think that makes you and me mice. What track are we looking for? Uh, let's see. It just says the J.B. Harlan murder train. I'll go check the schedule. Who are the glad rags for? You speaking to me? No, I'm speaking to this bum over here. Hot date? I don't know. It depends on what you consider a hot date. Can this guy eat without you cutting his food up first? I didn't come here to talk about my private life. I came here to see a friend off and get a lift to the theater. The theater? Let me guess. This guy got your fifth row center tickets for cats. He's got an in backstage. After the show, you can go back, scratch the cats between their ears while they cough up fur balls. <clears throat> Why couldn't you just say, I hope you have a nice time? I hope you have a nice time. Thank you. Whatever curdles your cream. It's a private train. Shock 29. Terrific. Terrific. Terrific! Wow. Carpeting on the walls. Must be tough to vacuum. Dear Ms. DePesto, welcome to J.B. Harlan's murder train. I am quite pleased to have you as my special guest and look forward to making your lovely acquaintance. Here's to a good mystery. Your humble servant, J.B. Harlan. It's almost more than I can stand. How exactly does this game work? I'm not really sure. I just know that this group gets together once a year and they race to solve a mystery designed by J.B. Harlan. If you can solve it, you win. But where's the rest of the group? Maybe that's part of the mystery. That's kind of what the whole thing's about. You never really know what's going on. Maybe I should get a head start and scout out the place. Thank you for helping me with my stuff, you guys. I never could have done it by myself. We wouldn't dream of leaving you stuffless. Have a terrific time. I think I will. Gotta admit, pretty plush. Bet you the whole damn train goes condo within a year. Addison? All right, all right, all right. I'm just gonna look around a little bit. Pretty classy. Personal head. Elegant button. What are you doing? I'm gonna see how these things work. Why? Because it's there. Isn't that a line from Mountains and Three Minute Miles? I'm gonna tell you something. Miracle of miracles. You remember the big blackout in 1965? Whole East Coast blacked out for a night. Well, I never told anybody this, but I caused that. Why aren't I surprised? All the time. The whole time I was growing up, my mom kept telling me, David, turn the lights out in your room. There are children in China who are in the dark. And all the time, the whole time, I never turned them out. There's a rebel in me. I admit it. So one day, I'm over at my friend Jeffrey's house, and I remember thinking, oh, no, I got to get home before my mom gets home from work because, dangerous guy that I am, I left the lights on. For no reason. They're just on. Wasting energy, wasting money. So I get on my bike, and I'm riding home as fast as I can. Right? Because I, I got to beat my mom home, right? And I, I get home, slam on the coaster brakes, throw the bike down. I look up, and I see the lights are still on. I also see that my mom's still home, so I figure maybe she hasn't noticed yet. So I go into my pocket for the key. I figure I'll go in, sneak in, turn the lights off, and I'll be safe. I go in my pocket, and there is no key, which means I got to ring the doorbell, which means my mom has to come answer it, which means she's going to go by my room, see my lights are on, and realize once again that I cannot possibly be her son. There must have been some mix-up at the hospital. This is a riveting story. Anyway, I press the doorbell, and it goes ding. Is that it? That's the story? Don't you get it? Normally, our doorbell goes ding dong. This time, it just went ding. I heard it go ding, and I turn around and look, and all the lights on my block go out. I did it. Overloaded the whole system just because I left the lights in my room on. I never told that story to anybody. I wonder why. So now, whenever I see a button, press it. Put me out of my misery and press it. My kind of button. All right. Can we leave now? Nice. Superb. Takes me back to my days of San Quentin. It's a joke. Come here. Give it a test ride. I'll take your word for it. 
Maddie. David. You know what your problem is? I'm sure you'll tell me. It's just not spontaneous. You're right. Let's go. Come here. Come sit by me. Why? Because we're here. On a private train. With a nice bed and carpeting on the walls. And besides, I ask nice. I'd do it for you. And then we can go? Then we can leave. There now, see? That didn't hurt a bit, did it? No. It must have been really something back then. <laughs>